Greetings! Welcome to the devlog for hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades. We're going to start off as always with a quick sound check. Make sure speakers aren't up too high. Wonderful. So what have we got for you this week? Well, I took a bit of a light week this week, mainly uh, finished up some stuff that I had started working on a while ago, uh, mainly because I, I wanted to experiment with something that I can't show you folks yet, uh, as well as an experimental modification to, uh, to one of our locomotion modes, which I'll get to in a moment. But I will go ahead and pull out and show you a, uh, a new toy that I have for you folks. I actually requested this from a frequent uh, contributor to the game, Stefan, a while back. I fell in love with it when I first learned about it. It is the M1912. Just look at that beautiful slide fire pistol that is a little unusual in that this, despite the fact that it looks like it would have, doesn't have uh, removable magazines. The magazine is internal, like with, say, uh, a C96. So we pull the slide back here, and we take a stripper clip of eight rounds, and then we push it down into the pistol, remove this here, and fire. Wonderful. Nice and poppy. Now, obviously, this means because of just the placement of, uh, of this clip and your controllers, this can be a little bit of a pain in the butt to load. It is actually easiest to grab it at the top and then move your controller sort of a little bit to the side so that as you push down like this, you don't smack your controllers into each other. Some of you, based upon your controller geometry, will have to grab with the lower point and pass your controller down or past in whatever angle makes it so they don't smack into each other, like so. You may need to grab it and do that twice. Just one of those design challenges that comes with, uh, you know, the geometry of objects we're holding versus the geometry of the objects we are actually holding. To go with it, we have its, uh, its larger sibling, the M1912 P16. Now, normally, when I've done pistol carbines in the past, I've made them modular, i.e. something you can take the, uh, you know, the, the stock on and off with. But in the case of this one, I made it a single piece because the stock's connection wraps all the way around the grip. It's very specifically made for this handgun and this handgun only, and the collision of this would interfere with, uh, with handguns that actually have removable magazines. So it is specific to this pull this back. This, as you can see, has an extended internal magazine. Um, this is one of those examples where you, you see this a lot um, with sort of World War I era weapons, where there was an original handgun that was made, and the, you know, the creator of it was trying to sell it to various militaries around the world. And then as, uh, as volume of fire became more relevant, as well as these sort of intermediate weapons in between a handgun and a machine gun, you had all of these attempts at, uh, at carbines that, from everything I can tell from, from what I've you know, read and watched, were, were never really fantastic. Um, but this one is, is unique in that, in addition to our semi-automatic fire for it, uh, we can, in fact, knock it over to full auto. Which, of course, fires fast enough that you, uh, you tear through that 16-round capacity uh, pretty fast. Whap! There you have it. A little piece of history that is just gorgeous. I have also got uh, something, something else cool and then something else ridiculous for you. On the cool side, we have a, uh, a new, this was, uh, this was requested by at least one person in the community, maybe two. We have a uh, bespoke scope for the Model 8 now. Also fits the Model 81, as you would expect. It's offset, which allows you to still load from the stripper clip, which just looks awesome. Wonderful. 
which I felt was, uh, I, I sort of raced to put this in after it was suggested because I realized that really the Model 8 is the highest tier weapon that you get when playing Cow Wiener Calico because it's, you know, a, a fast to load, stripper clip, five shot semi auto. And so it made sense to also have an available attachment for it to turn it into a longer range weapon. And despite the fact that the irons on this are quite nice, uh, this scope actually makes this really useful in those long hallways in Take and Hold. Wonderful. Oh, I just, I love this piece. And then finally, we have one last thing on the ridiculous end. I have finally just gotten sick of the screeching requests uh, for this involving the MG42 and how everyone's like, but you run out of bullets so fast with the assault drum. Not my fault. I didn't design it. And so once again, with the help of Stefan, I present to you the historically inaccurate uh, giant belt box for miserable wieners. That's right. You finally have a 200 round belt box for this stupid thing. I hope you're happy. <laughs> there you have it. Oof, we uh, at Target has seen better days. So I hope I never get bothered about this again. <laughs> There you go. Anywho, let's uh, let's jump on over to a different scene as I would like to show you some experimental changes that I have made to locomotion collision testing uh, that I'm testing out just using Arm Swinger for now. So, over in the proving round, I'd like to demonstrate some changes. As I said, these are only in Arm Swinger right now because the even the collision detection for the player kernels for touchpad locomotion and arm swinger locomotion are completely separated in H3 for a bunch of fiddly reasons that would bore you. Um, but I am testing out some new collision handling. And what that basically means is what happens when we hit and slide along walls, what happens when we clamber up onto things um, that are related to inertia, grounding, etc. Along with that, I have included uh, the ability now to jump in arm swinger. As I know a lot, especially those of you with uh, Vive Wands who don't have an extra button to be able to map to it, you can now, if you're holding both buttons down, if you just pump your arms up above your head, you will now jump. Whew. Like so. Wee! Super fun. You can now use this to notice something different in collision handling. Currently, if you are in the air and you run into anything, if you strike a wall, basically it kills 100% of your velocity and you just sort of plummet straight down. Now, and it's still not perfect, I'm trying to get it to work, if we jump like this, you'll notice I kept moving laterally a little bit. Let's see if I can get going faster. Urgh. There we go. Notice how we actually now reliably slide along walls after an impact. Lastly, the last little thing, and this is this is probably going to be the biggest one, and this was recommended by uh, or suggested by someone on the subreddit. I'm going to grab a two-handed weapon to demonstrate this. You will now notice a new option under here, I need to fix this, it doesn't highlight correctly, called Arm Swinger Base Speed. What this basically means is that when I set this to anything other than off, when I click one of the buttons for Arm Swinger, instead of it requiring velocity from the hand, it sort of clamps the amount of inertia the hand can add to my speed to a certain value, which means that I can still, you know, arm swing as normal, get going really fast like so, but if I just click one of the buttons, it will always give me a little bit of speed. And I actually like using this. I'm going to I'm going to actually turn on my controller visibility momentarily 
so that you can see better why I think this might be great for a whole bunch of you. So here, my controller is visible here. Remember, arm swinger picks the direction that you're going based upon controller facing. So if I click this button here and turn my controller like so, it allows me to move in all directions, and I'm doing this by just holding one button. So with some arm swinger base speed now, I can use this to peek a corner, still be in arm swinger mode to be able to say, come down a hallway really rapidly like this, and then peek a corner, like so. So, give that a shot. You will notice that it is in, do, 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 do. Where are we? What do we look for? Movement, smooth, loco. We've got three different options. So up it fast, it will actually give you a pretty, and, and it's per button you press. So, oop, you will notice with the new arm sorry, I'm still tweaking it. Going upstairs right now is not smooth on the new arm swinger. I still need to work on what's called the step height. So apologies for that. But yeah, so for those of you who like one button locomotion or just tearing through things uh, at high speeds, base speed might be what you are looking for for your arm swinger experience. Let me know what you think about it. And as I said, I will, I'll fix this thing with the blasted stairs. Uh, it is not good at the moment. Cool. Well, let's jump out of VR. I think I mostly covered things, but oh, no, there's some take and hold stuff I'm going to, uh, to talk about now. Yo. So a couple more changes that are relevant to you folks. First off, I did not really do any like bug fixing this week. I kind of wanted to just take the week a little more chill. I had some doctor stuff to deal with. And as you can see here, I'm still working on rearranging uh, my apartment and my workspace. I will, I'll show, I'll show you folks the new sweet desk setup I have once it's all actually looking nice. Um, I'm actually ergonomic, which means hopefully the shoulder should stop hurting all the time. Um, so stuff that is, uh, has been changed. Um, GI Grayson's weapon progression has been changed after a really astute observation um, that someone made on the Steam forum, which is that because the, the World War II progression doesn't have armored enemies, the, the bump up from pistol caliber effectiveness to sort of rifle caliber, at least in a CQB situation, isn't that much. So in, in, in many ways, especially with the enemy volume, a bolt action rifle is not universally an upgrade from a handgun just because from a capacity standpoint. And so as an experiment, I have changed the order and value of some of those weapons in that progression. So instead of starting with like a seven shot handgun, you're gonna start with either a shotgun or a bolt action weapon. And handguns are gonna be something that you get as a as higher level equipment on like the second hold. Um, so you actually have to do it. So basically it's going to be the like, do I either have something that loads fast, but that I have to actuate complexly per shot or something that might even be semi-auto like the, uh, like the, the, the auto five shotgun, but has to be loaded one round at a time. So I want to see how that works for the early game for that character and uh, see what people think. There's also a new take and hold character, um, which is uh, Soldier of Fortune Frankie, which is our sort of post-war weapon pool. Um, and as such, I've changed Operator Ori. Before, Operator Ori's weapon loadout spanned like 1947 to current, which doesn't make a ton of sense. Um, and so I have split those into one, uh, Soldier of Fortune Frankie is your sort of post-World War II up to like 1989 for weaponry, and then uh, op Operator Ori is like 1990. Basically anything with pick rails up is going to be what you find uh, with that character to help split them up a bit. Um, that is, yeah, that is is mainly, I think I tweaked, 
a couple other like little little futzy value things but it's mostly the same keep giving me feedback for things i didn't tune a lot of stuff with the take and hold progressions this week as i said i was doing other stuff um but yeah so keep posting stuff keep letting me know what you uh what you think and for those of you who use arm swinger let me know what you think about the new collision handling i'm very much interested in if you encounter suddenly with this new arm swinger version places where you fall through the level where you didn't before i definitely want to know because that's a regression um or if you get really really different i know obviously stairs stink um, but slow handling should be good. Just let me know if you run into anything strange uh, with it. Obviously, there are there's so many different topologies, so many different like styles that I've done colliders in the game. I haven't had enough chance to test um, whether or not this new way that I'm doing things ends up uh, ends up breaking things. It's always super dangerous to change anything about the way your character controller handles collision with the environment once you have already authored environments uh, with collision. But I think the changes I've made here are precise and structurally similar enough to how things worked before that I shouldn't run into too many problems. You know, cross his fingers. Anywho, let me know how it goes, and if it's disastrous, I can revert part, parts of it or just continue to try to, uh, to work on it. But, yeah. Anywho, I hope you all have a, uh, a wonderful weekend, and I'll talk to you all soon. Peace.